everybody and welcome to another edition of ring respect radio right here on the video bros network i am bobby munson and i am joined as always by the man with the angelic voice he is the throat of the goat you know him best as papa smokes papa smokes how you doing tonight i'm doing awesome how's everybody out there hopefully you're doing awesome and watching a lot of great wrestling and speaking of great wrestling we're talking all about the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA, here today because, Papa Smokes, we got to do some coverage of Episode 2 and Episode 3 of NWA Shockwave, which definitely got a lot of talking points to go over. But before we even get into the episodes, uh, before this even went on the air, we were talking a little bit about uh, the UWN, the United Wrestling Network. Uh, we mentioned them when we were doing our review of Episode 1, and we didn't know a lot then. So since then, I went and did a little bit of uh, digging into it, found out that UWN is kind of like an overseer, uh, allowing talent to kind of bounce between different shows. We know that they uh, they are also linked up with Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, which is where we're seeing some of these faces come in for Primetime Live. Uh, Primetime Live are the ones that are recording in conjunction with the NWA, and then NWA are taking their matches from there to create NWA Shockwave. Uh, as far as I know, they're going on a little bit of a hiatus coming up. I know once we get to reviewing episode four of Shockwave at a later date, uh, we know that was the final one of the season. So they will be back with more. There is some other pre-taped material, but I think they're going to hold off for a little bit, give the uh, stars a little bit of a break, chance to be around their families for the holidays and make sure everybody stays safe and healthy at the same time. So, you know, credit to the UWN for making sure that everybody's been looked after and taken care of and making sure that that is priority number one, as opposed to making sure that there's content to put out in the world of wrestling. So from there, oh, sorry, Pop Smokes, I interrupted you. What are you going to no, say there? So, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so from there, uh, I think we're pretty much ready to roll with the episode, unless anything you want to add there before we start rolling. Uh, no, no, let's get on with the episode. This is a pretty good one. It sure was. So we kicked off the show. Once again, we're seeing... Uh, Camille being for, featured here. Camille taking on, uh, again, I'm bad with names, so hopefully I get this right. Sharon Shirai, I believe, is the name of the, her opponent on this evening. Yeah, I was a little confused about her name, too, because I heard that name, but then during the match, the commentators referred to her as CC Chanel. So maybe she's got different names, or maybe she uses different names with different prom promotions. I'm not sure, but uh, she, uh, yeah, she's Camille's opponent tonight. Yeah, and I... I think uh, when we did our review last time, I kind of mentioned about, uh, you know, you could definitely tell Camille a bit green, but she's worked her ass off in order to look like the physical specimen she has and, you know, really gotten to get used to the in-ring work and stuff. And I think it's paying off here, Papa Smokes, because what a difference between her previous match and this one already. I was a lot more into this particular matchup than her previous one. Yeah, uh, so the previous matchup that we watched was... Uh, more highlighting Camille uh, as the uh, the strong uh, ex football player that she is, and the uh, kind of uh, bulldozer type wrestler that she's going to be. This one was more. Uh, this one was uh, a little bit more competitive, and uh, and uh, Camille got worked over a little bit in this too. So we got to see how she would deal with some adversity as well. But uh, look good despite the adversity, and uh, man, she is going to be. A, quite the name going forward. I really think that this proved that she's got that ability. She is learning every single time and the work ethic that she is putting in 
is almost unmatched by some people in the industry today. And I think she is going to be a name to watch out for in 2021. Yeah, I also think that uh, any company's division would love to have a character like her or a wrestler like her, I should say, a, 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 a very physically large and imposing and intimidating person, uh, a big, strong juggernaut. I mean, she would be like the uh, like the Braun Strowman or the, the Mads Kruger of the ladies' division kind of thing, whereas lots of... Uh, Lady wrestlers are sort of more or less the same size. Uh, we got Camille coming in at six feet and uh, 190 pounds or whatever she must be. She's a she's a good one to have in there. She's a good challenge for all the other wrestlers. And let's just say that's a hundred 190 pounds of pure shredded muscle on that woman. I mean, she is intimidating. Even I would be afraid to piss this lady off. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what her actual weight is. I'm guessing that she's got a lot of muscle on a big, tall frame. So, uh, yeah, like you say, a little bit green still, but working on it and working hard, too. And uh, she uh, had a nice match against the Australian uh, CC Chanel here. And, uh, yeah, they're just going to continue to build her against some uh, different kinds of opponents. And uh, we'll see if she uh, ever gets up to the top for a title run at some point. Uh and uh, yeah, we'll all be waiting for that. We certainly will. So uh, up next, we had a promo from Aaron Stevens. He's going to be talking about uh, the championship match coming up next week uh, on the episode three that he's going to be tra- facing Trevor Murdoch, that national championship match. Uh, before we even talk about the promo itself, I don't think I've ever asked before, Papa Smokes, but what are your actual thoughts on Aaron Stevens, the wrestler? Okay, well, first of all, I didn't really know him from his previous WWE run. What was his name in WWE? Oh, Jesus! I knew you'd put me on the spot like this, and I can't remember. This is where Damian, we needed to hire a, uh, a person to Damian check these something. things. Well, what was that again? Damian. Yeah, Damian Sando. There we go. Thank you. Okay. That that clued in for me. And again, like so many people were really high on Damian Sando and WWE. Um, I always thought that uh, character-wise, this guy, I mean, he's comical and his timing is very comical and i think that's what always stood out about him he's got a personality that works and stuff like that but yet at the same time for me personally i find that he gets so goofy to the point where i can't take him seriously as much as i'd like to yeah i i i kind of agree on that too uh i also think when he first started in nwa on uh, nwa power that he I got what he was going for, but he didn't start to catch steam comedically or, or in any way for me until he he linked up with the question mark and started doing the whole Mongrovian karate thing. Then he kind of started to pick up steam as a, as a cowardly, uh, uh, preposterous heel. And uh, that's when the, the gimmick started going for me is when he became a shooter, Aaron Stevens, and... Uh, a few other things that were just ridiculous kind of, and uh, it, it started picking up. What I want to see is, is some good matches from him and some good ring work. That's that's what I haven't seen yet. He's pretty good on the mic and all that. Uh, like I say, I admit I haven't seen a bunch of his work in the past, but so far for NWA, I haven't seen a good match from him yet. We've seen some silly matches and somewhere he's just – been the coward champ and trying to get out with his title intact and and that's cool and everything but uh i I still feel myself craving a a a really good match from this guy we haven't seen it yet yeah and i mean there is the potential there again like this guy can talk he's a character i mean he's got that part of it down i'm sure he's got the ability to give us a, a match as we you know, again, I, I think we might be able to find out when we start getting to episode three here might be something a little bit more to talk about. But, uh, you know, this whole promo, again, it the, the only reason it caught my attention is because I like Trevor Murdoch. And when I heard that there's going to be a matchup for the national championship with Trevor Murdoch involved, now you got my attention. Yeah, and I, I like this match, too, because it, it's kind of a dichotomy between the comedy guy who's a coward and just trying to hold on to this belt with with anything he can and then just the ultimate serious working man wrestler trevor murdoch you know trained by harley race and and you know kind of uh echoing uh 
stars from the past like Dick Murdoch and Reese Stevens. Uh, I love his uh, thing. I love his character, and uh, I'm looking forward to this match a whole bunch. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, the next match up on the card here for Shockwave Episode 2, we had a match between Eli Drake, who we both talked highly about, and Eric Watts. I know I've heard the name Eric Watts, but I think this might be the first time I've seen a match with Eric Watts. How about yourself, Bob Smokes? Well, yeah, there used to be a wrestler, Eric Watts, in the 80s. I, I quickly realized that wasn't him. But, uh, yeah, I kind of thought this might be a developmental uh, uh, talent right here, Eric Watts. And then I started to watch this match and, and realize the size of this guy. And uh, I realized that he's... he's uh, He's obviously a high-up guy in one of these uh, adjacent promotions to NWA here, so I, I started uh, really to enjoy his stuff. He has a match on, on Episode 3 that's quite good, too, but, yeah, he's uh, he used his size well in this match against Eli Drake, who's, who's smaller than him, but obviously a very, very strong and very uh, experienced competitor and with a lot of uh, braggadociousness and such. We saw these two jaw jacking at each other at the beginning of the match as the kids like to say these days and uh and uh what we understand from the uh, commentators uh drake and watts have had uh, numerous uh bump ins in the past and uh matches and heat against each other in the past so this makes for an interesting match for uh somebody that's uh, new to these two yeah and you know what? i was very glad you brought that up a great job by the commentary team uh didn't know anything about Eric Watts, but then find out, like you said, this big, you know, intimidating looking guy, I, I mean, in terms of his physical size, quite intimidating, uh, has got quite a lot of experience behind him and that him and Eli Drake have got that history and that uh, it was almost like Eli Drake had gone on to bigger pastures than what Eric Watts was able to do. Eric Watts kind of being left behind, but then went on to become one of the top guys for the UWN and for Primetime Live and a former champion there as well too. So this guy a lot bigger deal than what I would have initially thought from the beginning, but great job on the commentary team uh, to come out and say, hey, look, this guy is a big deal. This is not your regular typical uh, challenge here. Eli Drake is in for a fight here and a fight we were. What a match it turned out to be. I thought this match was fantastic, Pop Smokes. Yeah, me too. Uh, and if we ever had any questions or doubts about uh, Watts before this match, as you watched it, uh, there was he controlled a great deal of this match, which you don't see all that often with Eli Drake. Uh, he he doesn't usually work from the bottom like that, but he couldn't get a handle on the superior size and strength of Eric Watts, and uh, uh, Eli. Barely made it back in his comeback. I kind of had to play possum and then hit the gravy train out of nowhere for the win. And uh, it, it made for an exciting match. Uh, I know Watts was surprised to lose that one afterwards. And uh, made good viewing for the, for the wrestling fan. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've already spoken highly of Eli Drake and his work. And yeah, a great job here to put him over. But man, I am now fascinated by Eric Watts. So, I mean, even though he took the loss in this one... I think they almost did a better job of introducing me, at myself, someone who was not familiar with his work, to his work, and now has made a fan out of me, because I want to see more of Eric Watts, which I'm glad we do get to see come episode three, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well, too. Yeah, and I'll join in on my thumbs up to the commentators for that one. Uh, doing the job, uh, it's supposed to be done, informing the fan and uh, selling them on the wrestlers. Definitely. So next, we had a promo from Priscilla Kelly. She is letting everybody know that she has got the title match coming up to the main event of the show. This is going to be a championship match between herself and champion Thunder Rosa for the NWA Women's Championship. Um, thoughts on the promo from Priscilla Kelly before we get into the match, Papa Smokes? Um, not too many thoughts on it. I, I got a kick out of that she said... Uh... She kind of tried to get the tears flowing, saying she thought her career was done when everything shut down to COVID. And, uh, but she informed us she's back and ready to fight tonight. So I guess that's the, uh, that's the uh, story of, uh, of the struggle that she's had over the past year, the same one that we've all had. But anyway, yeah, we got a you – know, was this an NWA title match? Yes, I believe it was. Yeah, championship so, okay. on the line. Yeah, versus Thunder Rose. Huge favorite of mine among lady wrestlers. I, I 
full heartedly believe that she's one of the best in the business. And, and that includes, uh, all federations. I think she could hold her own against, uh, uh anybody, uh, uh, Charlotte Flair, Oscar and everybody combined. And, uh, she also has a MMA experience as well, which just only adds to Thunder Rosa's legitimacy as a wrestler. You know, that she's not just pretending she can do all this stuff for real and she can, uh, pin and uh, submit and uh, hurt an opponent for real and it, it just adds to the uh, believability and realness of this whole situation i agree with you wholeheartedly again one of the best in the business like you say um and could hold her own in any uh, fed and anyone would be lucky to have her on their show uh, i think thunder rosa is maybe often overlooked maybe due to size and stuff but man you would think that almost wouldn't matter because i mean size wise she's no different in size than 90 percent of the women in all of the women's wrestling nowadays kind of thing but she has that legitimate background where you know that she could kick the absolute shit out of just about anybody that they throw at her Yes, I agree 100%. And I also respect Thunder Rosa for uh, she lives the wrestling business. Uh, her and her husband are starting a, an all-ladies promotion in uh, somewhere in Texas where they live. And uh, I know that once a wrestler starts promoting their own uh, federation, that they're they're you know they're interested in improving the business. They're they're interested in making a legacy for themselves beyond just being an in-ring competitor, but she's trying to get the ladies movement going even stronger by having uh, her own fed that is just a ladies fed. So uh, cheers and good luck to Thunder Rosa in that venture. Yeah, maybe hopefully that'll uh, lead to another connection for the NWA to utilize some talent and stuff like that and give some of their talent a chance to step in a ring somewhere else and get that experience that they're going to need in order to keep themselves strong moving forward. That's right. That's right. And uh, another thumbs up to Thunder Rosa. What champion, or what at least ladies champion, but even even uh, amongst the men, what champion has been defending their belt more often on large platforms uh, in the past couple months than Thunder Rosa? She's defended it on uh, on NWA TV, AEW TV. Like she doesn't have to go there and defend her title uh, in another Fed. But she does it because she's a fighting champ and she wants all different kinds of opponents. She doesn't fear anybody. She wants good matches. She wants tough competition. And that's what a champion is. That's what I respect in a champion. Yeah, she's done great wonders for the NWA and the NWA Women's Championship. Uh, but, you know, that's all the talk on Thunder Rosa. Now let's uh, break down the matchup a little bit. What were your thoughts on the matchup with Priscilla Kelly? Okay, well, I'm not uh, very familiar with Priscilla Kelly. I, I recognize her name from somewhere in the past, but uh, at any rate, this is the first match I've watched of hers. And to be honest, after after we pumped uh, Thunder Rose's tires for so long, this match didn't really do it for me, Munson. Yeah, I have uh, I have written right in here in my notes. This match is way too long, and I have three, four, five wise on the end of that way so i think it was way too long uh priscilla kelly controlled much of this match uh kind of more in the heel role uh, getting heat on thunder rosa i thought kelly looked awkward physically uh looked rusty which may be the case if she hasn't uh, had matches all this uh, year pretty much since covid shut down she used a lot of knee strikes and kicks which is fine um I I just saw a vast talent difference between Thunder Rosa and Priscilla Kelly. Uh, it kind of just looked, uh, Kelly looked like a fish out of water, I must say, in this match. She looks like she needs maybe to go back to uh, wrestling school a little bit. Her strikes didn't look convincing. Her defense didn't look good. Her bumping didn't look good. So I... I yeah, as, as much as I like Thunder Rosa, I couldn't really get into this match because of her opponent, which, at least in this match, just didn't look good at all to me. Yeah, and you know what? I'm right there with you, Pop Smokes. I mean, no disrespect to the work that they're trying to put in, or especially to Thunder Rosa, who we did pump up there. But again, this match was, it, it's long. And I mean, I'm not talking long like these 30, 40 minute, six commercial break matches that the dub or AEW put on every single week or anything like that. This is long for a YouTube one hour program. I mean, you can have longer matches like this, but 
this was not the one to be having on this particular date. It didn't work. It fell flat. Thunder Rosa picked up the win, which is the right decision to be made here. Um, again, I, I guess Priscilla Kelly was made to look strong in the process, but I don't think it really did anything to benefit your champion by making her go this much of a distance with somebody who I don't feel was quite at that caliber. Yeah, totally. I agree with that two months. And I think what this match did was it was attempting to make Priscilla Kelby look good, but she didn't look good because she just, she needed some warm up matches before this or something. I, Cause I, I'd like to think that this just wasn't her best showing. I, I don't know her. I don't care what she thinks of my review kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I have the feeling she probably has and could do better. But this just wasn't her match. And then the way they had a book to go so long for, a, like you say, a one-hour uh, YouTube show, it just it wasn't doing it. And, uh, hey, that's the way she goes sometimes. Not every match can be uh, five or seven stars by Meltzer's uh, view. It, it just some matches some matches don't work. It, it probably looked good or sounded good before they did it, and they thought they'd give it a while, but it just didn't turn out, and that's the way she goes sometimes. And, hey, we're, we're, we're Ring Respect Radio, but we got to be honest. When we don't enjoy something, we don't enjoy something. It's no disrespect to the work being done inside the ring by the competitors necessarily. And just... You know, sometimes there's more work to be done in order to get them to the level that it become that level of entertaining. But, you know, again, that's what that's what can become expected by watching some of these shows. These are a lot of the times people who are very uh, new to the business or green, especially when it comes to wrestling on television, Pop Smokes. And there's a lot to be learned. So it's good to be able to watch that, see where they come from. And, you know, two years from now, we might be talking a completely different game when it comes to Priscilla Kelly. I mean... Hopefully she gets those matches and changes our minds down the road. Yeah, yeah anything's possible, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, work on it, Priscilla, and uh, uh, we're looking for better things from you from the future. Definitely. So that wraps up uh, Episode 2 of NWA Shockwave. So then we're going to roll right into Episode 3, NWA Shockwave, and this one kicking off with another one of Aaron Stevens's wonderful promos, if you could call him that. I mean, again, for me, these promos with him are either hit or miss. Sometimes they can be interesting or comical. Other times, I honestly, I could fast forward a lot of what Steven says sometimes. It just, it doesn't click with me like it does some of the other fans in the wrestling community. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that too. And uh, yeah, like we say, uh, his in-ring stuff hasn't been all that great in NWA yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more. His promos, he's kind of stuck on the mid-card comedy kind of thing, and, and that's fine. But uh, I think this guy's good. I, I just also think that he'll, he needs to find his stride or you know feel a little bit more comfortable in the NWA or something. But I think it'll come along. Definitely. So uh, from there, we kick off our first match of the evening. This one between Nicole Savoy and former NWA women's champion Allison K. Uh, good to see Allison K back in action, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I actually thought she was gone from NWA from some of the uh, chit chatter on Twitter there, but uh, I was very glad to see her back doing a match because uh, NWA needs experienced and established stars like her. In, in either division, they definitely in the ladies' division as well. And, uh, yeah, former champ, and uh, I, I like Allison K a whole bunch. I think she's completely convincing, both in promos and in uh, in-ring work. Really, really good wrestler, great promo, uh, obviously has studied um, greats from the past in professional wrestling. I, I absolutely have no doubt of that. And uh, she puts forth a great appearance, uh, whatever she does on TV. Well, that said, uh, let's get into the match. What did you think of her encounter with Nicole Savoy here for an opening match? Well, we talked uh, uh, on the last episode of uh, NWA Shockwave about a ladies match that we didn't like so much. I think we were both in agreement about that. This one, the absolute opposite of that. I, I loved this match. I thought it was really, really good. I have written in my comments here, Allison Kay is a great professional wrestler. Uh, she just, she, she's so smooth and so fluid. She's got great moves. Uh, she looks awesome. Her facials are excellent all the time. 
and she was in there against a good opponent this time too. Uh, I, again, I don't know much about Nicole Savoy. They call her the queen of the suplex. She definitely showed that in this match and with a lot of good throws. Another strong girl here too. Allison Kate, pretty strong, pretty good sized lady also. And uh, this was just an awesome match. So again, sometimes you don't know what it's going to look like beforehand or, or you just going on what it looks like on paper. But this is one that, that completely delivered and makes their uh, ladies division look absolutely excellent. Yeah, I, I'm wholeheartedly on board with you, Papa Smokes. I really loved this match. Man, it felt hard hitting. It felt like they were in a good battle with each other, very back and forth. Uh, made both women look very good. Um, again, I would not uh, hesitate to watch another Nicole Savoy match after seeing this one. But again, Allison K. I mean, I don't think I've missed an Allison K. match that I, you know, in the last little while that I'm aware of. Anyway, I'm glad to see her on NWA television. I would hate to see someone of that caliber go somewhere where she's not going to be utilized in the right way or ends up falling on the back burner along with a lot of the other rosters that go to these larger companies and really they just don't know what to do with them or don't have the screen time for them or believe they don't have the screen time for them like they get when they come to places like the NWA or say MLW. Yeah, uh, let's just hope that's something that went into her decision to stay with the NWA is that she's getting respect from them and uh, getting a, a spot on TV and uh, as one of the top ladies in their division, and uh, she absolutely deserves that and uh, showed it in this match. Yeah, I'll, I'll check out either of these uh, lady wrestlers anytime. Yes, definitely. So, great match, great win for Allison K. Uh, from there, we got another match up right away. Uh, this one, uh, I was shocked to see this guy, DePope, Elijah Burke. He's back on television and uh, NWA television, no, nonetheless. Uh, not sure if all our listeners are well aware of this guy, but Elijah Burke, uh, definitely got a long career, uh, in the ring. And then also as a, uh, commentator on impact wrestling for quite some time as well, too. And, uh, he was teaming with, uh, Eric Watts. Uh, nice to see there. And we got a matchup tag match them versus Zicky Dice, who I know we are both, uh, talked highly about before and Effie, but, uh, that goes without saying, uh, three out of four ain't bad at least. Yeah. Yeah. The Pope had made some uh, appearances on NWA Power, too, as kind of a managerial role. He always felt like maybe he was going to be getting into the ring at some point. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to see him in the, in the ring. He looks great. He looks the same as he did uh, 15 years ago in TNA. And uh, he hasn't really lost a step in the ring. And I was glad to see him with Big Watts. We talked about him on uh, Shockwave Episode 2. Uh, uh, gone my attention and I think both of our attentions as a, as a big heel character. And uh, yeah, this was looking like a good match going in, but uh, is this heel versus heel in this, uh, in this tag match Munson, or what did you think of this? Uh, I, uh, I almost think, right off the I almost think that in this case we are seeing Eric Watts. I don't know if he's actually a heel. I think, he kind of played up to that heel characteristics against Eli Drake, and I think that was sold on their history. Not that they are actually both heel characters, but both babyface characters with a bit of animosity between them due to their past and stuff. So I believe Eric Watts still a babyface teaming with babyface Elijah Burke or the Pope. Uh, definitely, when you look at the other side, Zicky Dice, no doubt a heel character, and Effie, uh, whatever the fuck he is. Yeah, I, I've never been, I've seen some of the stuff online and uh, I'm not really convinced with Effie all that much. I don't know what kind of a role he plays. He seems to be a a, a face that does things sometimes like a lot of guys try and get away with now. I don't know, it's, I find it confusing even as a veteran wrestling viewer. So as you, you settled that a little bit into, you could see that the Pope and Watts were the faces in this match uh, because they were on the uh, defensive for a lot of this match. Uh, one of the good things I can say about Dice and Effie as a team is that they use some old school tag team match, double teaming and rule breaking in the corner. I like that a whole bunch. Uh, uh, just, for you while the uh, man on the outside uh, chokes or, or strikes the uh, his opponent in the corner, and uh, I like that stuff a whole bunch. So we tag team match 
going for a while there. Uh, the Pope and Watts sold quite well for the for the majority of this match. Uh, I like Zicky Dice. We were talking about him uh, in the past couple episodes or some of the episodes of our podcast before. It seems like uh, this might have been his last or one of his last matches. Uh, I have to say on, online about uh, his treatment by uh, NWA officials and all that. It felt like he had been done wrong by them a little bit, and I think he's done there now, but it uh, might have been his last match. Uh, second last, if I'm not mistaken, because he does have one on episode four, um, which okay. actually kind of ties into this, actually, because Elijah Burke at the end of this gives that promo that, you know, a promo that not many can deliver in wrestling nowadays, it seems, yeah. but it made sense. It was on point, and he challenged Zicky Dice for a one on one, which we'd see in episode four, which we're not covering today, but we will get to down the road here. For sure as well too and a lot to talk about there i can't remember if it's in episode four i'm starting to get muffled a bit but zicky dice either in this episode or in four i believe gets out to the outside of the ring and he actually starts making some derogatory comments towards billy corgan which now i didn't really know about the animosity there so i don't know how much is real of this i thought maybe he was just doing some good heel work but there could be some realist realism but if I'm not mistaken, he actually calls Billy Corgan out and says, where are you, Billy? Where are you? You're probably busy at, busy at home writing another garbage Smashing Pumpkins album. I saw your stupid new video with you dancing like a moron or something like that. I, I heard this and thought, hey, that's some great heel work on the part of Zicky Dice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I haven't heard that part yet. It all me. Okay, so maybe I'm spoiling episode four here ahead of time, so uh, pretend like I never said that, and we'll uh, get back to that when we get to that episode down the road. Oh, way to go, man. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Spoiling it all. But I'm just kidding, but yeah, you brought up the post of Smash promo after uh, he got win in this team match, and uh, he had some pretty strong things to say, too, but kind of wondering that promo might have been uh, set up beforehand or some some it might have been a shoot he had some pretty harsh things to say too uh, I, it makes you wonder what's going on in the in the back rooms of uh, uh, NWA and their affiliates at this time there seems to be some heat going around it makes it fun for the fan but uh, you're watching stuff that's been taped weeks ago and then you're hearing about what's uh, actually ongoing in real time it, it's kind of interesting to piece together as you go back yeah, definitely so, man. It's a, It's been an interesting time, an interesting show, but a great job. Uh, Elijah Burke really uh, sold me on this and brought me back to what made him interesting in the first place uh, back in his run with Impact Wrestling and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I'm sold on this one-on-one -on -one counter between Zicky Dice and, um, and, sorry, Zicky Dice and the Pope, which we will see on the next episode. I won't go ahead and say anything more than that. We'll get to that at a later date. So great matchup. Great promo. Looking forward to it. And from there, we have our main event, Papa Smokes. It's the national championship match. This one, Aaron Stevens defending against Trevor Murdoch. So why don't you uh, bring us into this one? Look. Yeah, yeah. We've already been talking about uh, Aaron Stevens and Trevor Murdoch. Uh, like we said, uh, either of us is really convinced that uh, Aaron Stevens is all that comfortable in his kind of comedy position at this point. Uh, I've said before that I think he's on to something good that there could be a, a fairly comedic uh, spot in, in the in the show. But um, I, what I wanted to see was some good matches out of this guy. And then like sometimes when you ask for something, this is what you get. I thought this match was pretty good, and I thought Aaron Stevens uh, worked as a rule breaker quite good in this match. Uh, he wrestles in the full gi. Uh, I thought his, despite his comedy uh, uh, leanings, that his in-ring look, in-ring work looked a lot more serious. Uh, he had he had some nice spots where he was choking Trevor Murdoch with the black belt. You know that he's got the black belt in mongrove, mongrovian karate that he's been uh, parading around and everything. Using that as a prop in the match worked for me and. Uh, and then, yeah, I thought this match was a pretty good showing by Aaron Stevens. I always liked Trevor Murdoch's work, so this this match worked for me, especially as a as a kind of underneath championship match. 
What did you think of this match and the finish of it, Bunsen? I thought this was fantastic, Papa Smokes. I really enjoyed this one. Again, finally getting what we asked for. I mean, you can only ask for so much comedy from a guy before you got to nut up and get in there and give us something worthwhile. And finally, Aaron Stevens nutted up and gave us something worthwhile. Even though he did not come out victorious, he did not look like a chump in this either. This was probably one of the best displays of his in-ring work. And it worked for me. I enjoyed it. I could be a little bit more sold on Aaron Stevens, seeing more of this from him going forward. And again, the a, a big hero's win for Trevor Murdoch in winning that national open uh, that national championship and how much it means to him. It was that real feel good moment when Trevor Murdoch finally picked up that victory in the end. Yeah, yeah. I also like the way they booked the finish of this too. That uh, Stevens had been rolling up uh, Murdoch for the pin, but Murdoch reversed the pin. That was a very nice move. That was a you can tell uh, that Harley Race taught him that move because that would be a good title match finish in the old, old NWA there too, where you would be uh, in the kind of match where you wanted both competitors to come out looking good, but you still had to change a belt over. That's precisely what a finish like this was for. I think it was the same finish used in uh, Davy Boy Smith versus Bret Hart in the famous uh, SummerSlam Intercontinental match. Love that spot, love that reverse pin, and uh, it, it it looks legit, and it makes both guys look legit. I, I really thought this was well booked. Yeah, very well booked, Pop Smokes. I love it. Uh, big title change here for the NWA, which, I mean, they, they, ne- they needed some shakeup, obviously, with the long period of time off, and Trevor Murdoch, obviously a guy that uh, Billy Corgan and the rest of the crew over at NWA can definitely rely on. I mean, obviously, they, they're relying well on Aaron Stevens as well, so they were able to get a quality main event out of these two guys, a quality championship match. And, you know, now more so than ever, a quality national champion out of Trevor Murdoch as well, too. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. And and before this match, I was kind of thinking to myself, well, good, I hope that Murdoch wins the belt and then we can have a better champ with some better uh, national championship matches but after watching this match, I could actually get behind uh, Stevens coming back for a, another program with uh, with uh, Murdoch in, in maybe having a series of title matches uh, where, you know, perhaps Murdoch retains for a bit and eventually loses it back, or maybe he retains the belt. I, I don't really care. I, I could go for more of a program between these two after seeing this match. Yeah, it was, it, it was sold to me well. I liked it. I enjoyed it. And again... Like we said, for all the talk of Aaron Stevens and the comedy and stuff like that, this went a different direction. I enjoyed it, and I'd like to see more of it. Um, Episode 4, we will see more of Aaron Stevens, but I won't uh, reveal what just yet. Uh, He is definitely there, and we'll uh, talk more about that at a later date. So, uh, great job by both these men. Great job of the booking of NWA. And this NWA Shockwave episode, I'm going to... Stamp this one. Episode 3 is the best of the NWA Shockwave episodes thus far, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you might be right. I I did like the title match in in Episode 1, but this maybe overall had the best uh, match quality. Definitely. So, I mean, we're talking three great matches here. Uh, Not a lot of filler in between, just three solid matchups. They all worked. They, you know, brought us in strong with a great one-on-one women's match. Uh, Brought it into a tag match to... Bring in the uh, middle of the card, that great promo from Elijah Burke there, and then finish it off with this monumentous championship match. Great job by the NWA and everybody involved there. Uh, Great job by the UWN as well, too, Primetime Live and the commentary team over there. Really enjoying seeing these, uh, these faces back in the ring, NWA back in action. This is something we've needed, Pop Smoke. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I just wanted to say, too, we, we have our little criticisms here and there. I try and make it into constructive criticism. I, I just, uh, I'm not trying to crap all over uh, any of these matches or any of these stars. I want them to succeed. I want them to do better. And uh, whatever the NWA is doing right now by partnering up with some uh, other feds, I think is just what they need to do to keep afloat. And I just want them to continue.
continue. So whatever you guys have to do, uh, uh, partnering up and uh, splitting some costs and then trading some talent, uh, as long as it works so that you can keep doing your show, uh, uh, we're behind you. And, uh, yeah, I wish them uh, success. And I uh, hope oh, Billy Corgan writes a better song next time. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, something left to... Uh opinion i guess uh you know old bobby munson didn't have a problem with the song and even bought the album so i mean i'm just an old school fan of their music and enjoyed it and zicky dice can uh can go you know suck an egg or something as far as i'm concerned when it comes to his musical <laughs> opinions there but hey it is what it is it's good old heel work and stuff like that whether there's true animosity behind it or not that doesn't matter it makes for good television that's exactly what this was nwa shockwave great television some great wrestling I had fun watching it, Papa Smokes, and even more fun reviewing it with you here today as well, too. Yeah, good stuff. Fun for me, too. I can't wait for episode four. Would you say that's the uh, last one, as it will appear as Shockwave? They're going to switch to another format after this? Uh, no, not necessarily. It's the final episode of the Shockwave season for now. I guess they'll probably return okay. either later in January or February once more has been kind of taped i think they were just giving a little bit of a break to everybody make sure that you know with the rising cases of covid that nobody's getting sick and that they're running into any issues with the you know uh, breakouts of covid19 or anything like that so i think again just taking those safety protocols to make sure that the performers are all well and safe and that you know again let them see their damn families over the holidays again you know wrestling can take a week or two hiatus and allow people like us to create our content to talk about and stuff like that and give these stars a chance to go and spend time with their families that at the end of the day they're human beings just like ourselves and everybody listening we all want to be able to have that time with our families around the holidays and I was glad to see that they were allowing that to happen and allowing these stars to you know make sure that they were ready to go for 2021. Yeah absolutely and any time uh, spent away for a bit lets their bodies recover from the constant uh, barrage that they're undergoing all the time and uh yeah like you say i i'm i'm i'd gladly take less content to know that uh, the the talent and, and staff of these uh, federations are remaining safe and not sick and and uh yeah i i, I wish them all the best in the future just keeps uh, safe everybody and uh, we'll all enjoy our wrestling yeah, exactly. So looking forward to reviewing uh, Shockwave Episode 4 with you at an upcoming date here, Pop of Smokes, and hopefully looking forward to some other great wrestling that we're going to be able to encounter here coming up. And hey, you know what? Let's keep fingers crossed. I know we've been saying it all through 2020, but 2021, I'm really hoping that at some point this year, we get that opportunity to put on another Prairie Pro Wrestling show in some capacity, whether it's mid middle of year, end of year, whenever. I just really want to get back and be in front of that live audience once again, as I'm sure you're itching for that opportunity as well, too. Yeah, totally. Can't wait. And uh, got all kinds of ideas and all kinds of treats in store for the fans. So as soon as we can all get back together and do it, we will do it. Uh, be sure of that. Yeah, and we're going to come back and we're going to make an impact. That's for sure. So thank you once again, everybody, for tuning into this episode of Ring Respect Radio. Uh, Papa Smokes and I wish you and your family all the best. Stay healthy, stay safe. And while you're at it, go ahead, take a minute to click the subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell so you know when we release new material here on Ring Respect Radio, right here on the Video Bros Network. And as always, go and check out our good friends over at Backbreaker Media who have Previous uh, podcasts of ours on Ring Respect Radio up on their YouTube channel as well as on Podbean. So Ring Respect Radio really getting uh, out there amongst the audiences across Canada and hopefully across the world, wherever you're tuning in. Thank you for taking that time with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.